Hey there! Are you interested in learning about meal prepping? Or do you want to be more efficient at it? Well, stay tuned because today I'm going to talk about the essentials and how to help you meal prep like a pro. Welcome to the Viva Naturally channel, where we help you to manage your energy and health to boost performance. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notifications so that you know when we post a new video every week. So first of all, meal prepping is a term that's used to describe preparing meals in advance. And why do people meal prep in the first place? Well, for several reasons. Number one is because they want to eat healthier. Number two is to save time. And number three is to save money so that when they go to the grocery store, they have a list of things that they go out and buy and they don't buy other things unnecessarily. But there's one more tip and one more benefit that I wanna point out that people tend to forget and it's that it saves energy. And what I mean by that is every time you think about what to prepare, how to prepare it, and actually preparing it, it takes away mental and physical energy from your day. So if you can save time, energy, money in the long term and also improve your health with meal prepping, I definitely recommend that you try it out. And if you've tried it before, then maybe this, all of these tips that I'm gonna cover today will help you take it to the next level and meal prep like a pro. So the first tip is to make a meal prepping plan and schedule it. Now that we know what meal prepping is, I wanna ask you, why do you want to meal prep in the first place? Is it because of the reasons that we talked about, saving time, energy, and money? or is it to help your family or you want to eat healthier in general? Whatever it is, make sure you know your why because when we do, it's easier to stick with something, especially a new habit, like in this case, meal prepping. Also, you wanna know who will be eating the meals that you're going to prepare. So that way you can make account for how many containers you need and how much food to cook. And then you also need to know what you want to prepare. And this will lead us to our next step, which we'll get into shortly. But before that, you also want to know how many days a week you want to consume these meals. For example, there's people who only want to meal prep for five days, six days, seven days, or two weeks in advance. Whatever it is, make sure you clarify and you agree on that and you commit to it so that it makes it easier to prepare in the first place. Also, think about the types of meals that you want to cook breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, savory, sweets. That way you have an idea of what recipes to look for. And then last but not least, when are you gonna take the time to actually meal prep? It's very common for people to meal prep on Sundays or on Mondays. I personally like to meal prep on Sunday evenings or Sunday afternoons. That way the whole week the meals are ready, ready for me to consume and I don't have to worry about it at all. Make sure you pick your day and your time and you schedule it in your agenda so that you don't forget. Number two, create a system to collect the recipes and organize them in a way that you know where to find them. To me, this is one of the most important steps because I used to screenshot recipes for whatever I used to see online on Instagram or Pinterest. And I had some YouTube videos with recipes Basically, I had recipes all over the place, and I decided to use my number one best tool to organize everything in general, especially related to the business, Evernote. If you haven't already tried Evernote, I encourage you to try it. There's a free version, there's a paid version, so it's really the best way to put everything in one place. You can have different notebooks or notes. It's the way that you categorize things. You can add tags, you can attach things, you can put links, you can add your screenshots in there, you can have your own recipes. So it's really the best way for you to have a one-stop shop of all the recipes and things that you want to use for your meal prepping journey. And that's really what I recommend. But in addition to that, I highly encourage that you categorize things based on the type of meals that you want to prepare. For example, the breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, uh, savory, sweets, desserts, so that it makes it easier to grab them, pull them up, and then follow the recipe along. And then last but not least, some of the suggestions that I wanna give for recipes in case you run out of 
some of the ones that you already have, then you can check out the website pita.org and forksoverknives.com where they have tons of plant-based recipes and they're categorized in such an easy way so that you can pick whatever it is that you want to meal prep. Of course, we have some recipes in our YouTube channel, including one of my favorites, smoothie, a green smoothie, uh, pancakes, a pizza. So check those out and let me know what you think. The next step is to make a detailed shopping list. Now that you have your recipes collected and organized, this shopping list is what you will take to the store so you can grab the ingredients and go home and start meal prepping. Also, one thing I recommend is to stock up on meal prep essentials. And that's what I like to call things such as frozen fruits, frozen vegetables, some grains like quinoa and rice, and other staple foods like beans and legumes, nuts and seeds. Those type of foods you can store for long periods of time. Even your fresh produce, if you put them in containers and you freeze them, they can last you longer and it's often a bigger bang for your buck when you buy in bulk because it will definitely be worth your money. Number four, have your meal prep tools ready. So I have a list of some of the things that I like to use when I meal prep and these are kitchen appliances for the most part, some of which you probably already have at home. And I'm just gonna read them off to you so that you know what I'm talking about and we'll post a picture so that you can see it as well. The first one is one of my favorite things to use and I use it every day for, and for most of my recipes actually, and it's my Vitamix blender. I actually have a video where I did an unboxing and a review of this Vitamix blender when I first got it and if you want to watch that video, I'll leave that link below. The next tool that I like to use in the kitchen is my pressure cooker, which is actually multi-purpose. It's a slow cooker, a pressure cooker, it's a steamer, it's got so many good properties. I got it on sale for Thanksgiving last year and the name or the brand for it is Instapot. So I mainly use it for pressure cooking, like for beans and legumes but you can use it for many other things as well. The next tool that I like to use is my rice cooker, which I use not only for cooking rice, but also for cooking quinoa. And then it's got a steamer at the top so I can steam vegetables. And uh, anytime you have a multi-purpose tool, you can use it for more than one thing. It would save you time while you meal prep and it will definitely be more efficient. Next are baking sheets. You probably have this at home already for any baking. I use them for like things like sweet potatoes or roasting vegetables. It comes in really handy. And with that, you wanna have some parchment paper. I know some of the cooking sheets or the baking sheets are non-stick, but I prefer to put parchment paper on top because it not only keeps the cooking sheet cleaner, but it's also better for it to, if it's uh, if there's sauce, it doesn't stick to the pan and it just makes the job easier to be honest. Next is a non-stick large fry pan or what I like to call a wok because mine is pretty big, it's huge, it's a wok and it's just so easy and convenient to use it because you can put in vegetables with or without oil, however you like your recipes and you can stir fry, you can put as much or as little as you want. Now, if you want to have different sizes, that's fine. But for me, a wok just works so well and it's good quality. If you buy any pans or if you have any pans, try to use them either non-stick, preferably ceramic. The reason why, and I'm not gonna get into too much detail in this, but it's uh, recommended for it to be more on the natural side since some of the material in non-stick pans have chemicals. So be aware of that because the chemicals are released with the heat. If you wanna learn more about that, leave a comment below and I can do a video about some of the toxins in, in some of the kitchen utensils, including this. But for now, let's just keep going with the list. All right, so next is an oven. And you probably have an oven already as well. And different sizes. I don't have a small oven, although I might in the near future for for making smaller things, but I do use my conventional oven, my regular oven that is part of my stove. 
and I also have different sizes of pots, small, medium, large, if I'm gonna make some chili, if I'm gonna make a big patch like meal prep, then I use my larger pans. Of course, you want to have measuring cups and measuring spoons, and then spatula, things to scoop your food, some of the basic things that you probably already have in your kitchen, but that's it. That's really it, that's, that's all that I use personally. Now, the, you can get more advanced and have like a waffle maker if you make waffles or you can have a skillet uh, for like pancakes. You can really go <laughs> crazy with all of these different uh, gadgets, kitchen tools that people use for different recipes. But I like to keep it simple because of space and it just makes life easier in general. So those are my kitchen utensils and whatever it is that you use, I would say try and dust it off a little bit and keep it handy so that it's easy for you to pull out and use because when we pull when we put things away we tend to forget about them and but when when they're in eyesight or when they're easy to grab it's easier for us to actually start cooking tip number five is to make your kitchen a meal prepping machine and to do some smart multitasking by that i mean clear out your kitchen Make sure it's clean, take out everything you need, your ingredients, your tools, and it's just like when you're working at your desk and it's a clear and clean environment and it makes you want to work more, well, same thing with your kitchen. Put on your apron and get into the zone and know that you're going to enjoy the process, hopefully. Now, when it comes to multitasking, there are certain things that you can do to make it easier. For example, as you start making the vegetables, and you know that they're cooking for example and there's something else that you have to chop up well while something is cooking you can move on into the next step of the recipe so that you save time and then let's say everything is already cooking well while that's cooking then you can start to clean up as you go that will save you time and actually one of the most frustrating things for some people not all when it comes to meal prepping is the cleanup part so to avoid having long periods of time cleaning after your meal prep, just clean up as you go. Put things away and I would say don't be afraid to ask for help. If you have somebody in your household who can help you, ask them to help. Maybe they don't want to get in the kitchen and cook, but they can help you clean or you can tag team and that will make it so much easier for everybody actually. The next tip is to invest in good food containers. You want to have containers that will serve you for a long time, that won't break even if you freeze them. And what I like to use are glass containers. I know they may be a little bit heavier than, than plastic containers, but I use them for two reasons. First, because they last longer, unless you break them, of course. Second, because they don't get stained. Sometimes we use spices or some ingredients that have natural food coloring and it could stain your, your containers. So that will save, the glass will save you from having that happen. And then also because they're easy to clean and then they're they're not made out of plastic which most containers contain BPA and even those that say BPA free there's other chemicals that are involved so it's up to you to choose but I will also recommend that if you can have similar lids with the containers it would make it easier to just swap the lids if you lose one you can use the other one and uh, make sure that the lids are durable because some of the lids that I had from some of my containers break and so I can't use them anymore another container that I like to use and it's made out of glass are mason jars those are really good for storing things like smoothies juices salads dressings things that are liquid and they have different size mason jars. I have a whole collection and it's uh, they're great. I love them and you know you can have different types of lids as well. Also, one quick tip is that you can freeze some of your meal prepping food. If you plan to meal prep for five days or longer, I recommend that you freeze some of those containers. Wait a little bit after you store them Make sure that they're cool, that they're, they're not hot in the containers. And then depending on the type of food that you prepare, if it's plant-based foods, they will last longer, up to three months. But if you can consume them earlier, of course, the better. 
Speaking of storage containers, I want to share my favorite portable container and it's a crock pot. It's small and it's so cute because you can put in the food and take it wherever you want to go. All you have to do is connect it to electricity and it will heat up by itself. Depending on what type of food you have, it could take up to an hour or as little as 30 minutes. It's very convenient because not only can I store food there, but I can also heat it up. I don't have to use microwaves if I'm not at home and you can take it anywhere. So I'll put a link to that below if you want to check it out. Tip number seven is to have fun with it. I mean, you're already meal prepping in the kitchen. Might as well make it worth your time. Hopefully you're not meal prepping for too long. I recommend up to two hours. If you're starting for the first time, three hours is okay, including cleanup. But some of the things that I like to do as I meal prep and clean up is listen to music. Maybe you can have your favorite playlist going on in the background. You can have podcast. You can listen to audiobooks, whatever it is you like to do, make it enjoyable. And if you have other people helping you, then even better. I also recommend that if you have, if you take any pictures or any videos and you post them on the web, on any of the social media platform, tag us. I would love to see the recipes that you make or that you use from other places. I, I think it's great to share with others the process of starting something new, not only for motivation, but also for accountability. And it's something that I actually started to do with our recipes. And that's the reason why we got a request where somebody wanted to see and learn how to meal prep. And that's how we got to this video. So you never know until you share. The last tip, number eight for meal prepping is to keep your eyes on the prize. Remember the first tip where I talked about why do you want to meal prep in the first place? Always remember that because there's gonna be times where if you decide to cook or meal prep on the weekends, what if you're out of town for that time? What is your backup plan? Be prepared and remember why you want to meal prep in the first place. And I understand that there's business travel, there's vacation, there's times, there's holidays, and things can happen. As long as you get back on track and you keep your eye on your goal, why you started in the first place, because of your health, because to save time, to save money, to learn to cook new recipes, whatever it is, remember that every single time. Now, speaking of plan B, something that I like to do is to delegate or outsource meal prepping essentials such as grocery shopping or the actual cooking of the meals or the cleanup whenever I feel like I have a busy schedule going on. I hire somebody to come in and do this for me every other week and whenever I can I do it on myself and also because that's when I take the time to record some of the videos for, for you to check out on our YouTube channel. But other than that, I think that's a good option because if you're out of town or vacation, you have that. You can delegate to somebody else to help you in your family, in your circle of family or friends or you can pay somebody else to do it that you trust. Now I have a question for you. What is your favorite food to meal prep? I can share with you that my favorite food is chili. I love chili because it's one of the easiest things to meal prep. You put a lot of things in the pot, you wait for it to slow cook, and it smells so good and it's so filling. Of course, I add other things like rice or quinoa and vegetables, but it's very convenient. I wanna know what your favorite thing to meal prep is. Leave it down in the comment section below. Also, I'm interested to know, would you like to see a video where I show you how to meal prep a recipe? Since I just talked about chili, what if I showed you how to prepare chili for a whole week? Is that something that you're interested? Let me know down below as well. Remember to watch the Vitamix Blender review and unboxing. And if you want to start trying different recipes, check out our green smoothie recipe, which is what I love to consume for breakfast. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up and share this video with other people so that they too can learn how to meal prep like a pro. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs down. What? <laughs> <laughs> I have so many things to say. It's like, how do you organize it in your thoughts? Okay, let's try this again. <laughs>